Hey guys, Camila the coach here in a different park, but also speaking quietly so I'm not rude and obnoxious. You hear the birds singing in the background, it's more like arguing. And there's people all around me, so forgive the noise or disruption if you hear it. So I wanted to wait until I was in a better state of mind to do this video. Um, because I just want to talk about, so first of all, I'm Kamina the Coach. This channel is originally geared to help people get the, together to work and live abroad. COVID forced me to the United States, so I started looking at a lot of mental health issues and kind of sharing my journey. Um, in August of 2022, I was lucky enough to get back out of the United States to come work abroad, and that's my current journey. So this video is going to be um, slightly related to that and always some relation to or some tie back to mental health as well. Um, but they don't tell you about living abroad. So I think people are always glamorizing <coughs> living abroad. I think that people who have channels um, to that that are talking about you know tips and techniques to work and live abroad and people that offer training and coaching to work and live abroad are always making it out like it's just always a bed of roses and not just from personal experience but like from exposure to others living the experience i know that that's just not the case from really major upsets to some of the ones that i've had to what i'm having right now <laughs> to like really like minor stuff like your bags are lost for weeks on end. Nobody ever talks about this stuff. So I'm gonna talk about the stuff that people don't tell you about working and living abroad. I've done a, um, a video before on, um, I've done a video before on being sick abroad. And so we're not gonna talk on healthcare and all that kind of stuff because I've already done a video on that. If you are curious about that information, just go ahead and scroll through my videos. This one specifically is like on the challenges that I've had of living abroad, working and living abroad. I've had some really like interesting weird stuff happen and I've actually encountered other people who have had these similar kind of weird things happen. So, um, during the time that President Trump was um, kind of stirring things up, if you've been following my channel, you saw some of those videos when I was stuck in Hong Kong. So I'd actually gotten a job in Hong Kong and I was, I mean, in, in China, and I was supposed to be able to cross the border from Hong Kong into China and get my visa that way. I was denied at the border and denied at the border for no reason. I had my entire life's belongings with me, two massive bags, a small rolling bag and a big backpack. It was wildly stressful. I was stuck in Hong Kong for two weeks during the big riots. It was terrifying. It was probably the scared, most scared I'd ever been, the scariest thing I've ever experienced abroad because I was a little bit worried that um, the leaders in Hong Kong and Xi Jinping were going to enact martial law and start rounding up Americans. So it was really pretty terrifying to be quite honest. I got offered another job in Oman by a woman supposedly who had gotten the funds to open up her own school and um, she was just a teacher. She had no real experience opening and running a school and she had no real help. She was kind of on her own doing it. So that really backfired bad. Lee. Um, she sent me an email and told me that she couldn't get my visa for me and good luck <clears throat> and that I could stay in the accommodation till the end of the month. Mind you, she had flown me there and I was renting a car. She hadn't paid me for the time that I had been working. Um, it's the only time that I've had to open a GoFundMe account since I've been overseas. It was really embarrassing and just pretty tragic. So there was another teacher that got caught up there with me when that was going on. And when I was in Hong Kong, there was an, also another teacher as well who had gotten stuck there as well. Her visa had got denied at her turnaround. And so she was stuck, but not stuck there quite as long as I was. So two really major events. Um, also working in Oman previously, the first time that I had worked in Oman, I actually had a guy, so I was renting a car, and I actually had a guy follow me from the airport all the way to my house, um, which is like two hours, 
like high speed chase on the highway. It was really weird um, and scary. And it ended up being like that the whole neighborhood came out to like argue. Like my, my teachers came out to support me. The guy that I rent my car from um, was Moroccan. He came out to like fuss and argue. It was pretty stressful um, to say the least. And I ended up getting permission from the company to leave that contract because they actually ended up breaking the windows of my car out in retaliation because I did end up filing charges on the guy but I ended up dropping charges when they like broke the windows on my car so just to show you that it wasn't just me that it was happening to another teacher while they were driving down the street had a brick thrown at their car and another girl was pulled over by a cop and he demanded that she give her his phone number so I just kind of want to show that this is not just me I think it's easy to be like something's wrong with Kamina like things just keep happening to her it definitely isn't just me it just happens to be maybe only me that's keeping it real with the public about all the craziness that happens so what is going on right now so I'm currently in Mexico super thankful no matter the dramatic mildly traumatic story I'm about to tell um, I'm still thankful nonetheless to be out of the United States I've got to be honest um, I left the United States with only about three thousand dollars that went away really quickly because I needed to establish myself um, in the state that I was going to be living in <clears throat> I didn't like the city I was in it was very industrial like very gray and ugly so I didn't stay there for very long and so about a month and a half, I moved up to Cabo San Lucas, also didn't like it. It was a lot of teaching hours, really expensive, really expensive because of um, Americans moving down and gentrifying, driving up the cost of living. It was just a really not a pleasant place to work or live. So I eventually ended up here in Chiapas, Mexico. And as soon as I got here, I got an offer to go to work in Iraq making really good money. So in order not to be a dirt bag, I gave them notice really quickly and just as quickly they asked me to vacate the property. <clears throat> and they took, even though I taught for two weeks, they took my um, my flight ticket money. So that really left me with only like $100 that I got paid and I've actually spent um, a lot more since I've been here than $100. So. They asked me to vac vacate the property as of last Saturday, so I'm renting a room. I had to rent an economical room, so I'd say today it's probably about, in the sun, probably about 89 degrees, 85 degrees, and there's not an AC in my room, it's just a fan, there, which would be fine if there was a window, but there's no window in the room. The only windows lead to the hallway. Um, also, and probably the biggest problem is there's bugs. Um, <laughs> this is where um, vacuum sealing your clothes really comes in handy so I'm not worried about getting bugs in my clothes thank goodness because they're vacuum sealed I only have like a small bag of clothes that I'm working from and I continue to have them washed but um, yeah so there's bugs those kind of bugs and there's ants in my by my bathroom I mean full of ants like I'll spray the wall and just sheets of ants fall off onto the ground which is pretty creepy so um, I have to eat out every day because obviously there's bugs in the room so I can't have food in the room. And so it's all pretty expensive. I got the room anticipating, like my director had told me that I would be flying to Iraq um, 2nd of January. It turns out that I'm probably not flying until like the 20th of January. So today's like the 22nd of December 2022. So I am effectively stuck in this room a whole nother month, um, figuring out how to budget eating. So I'm eating like once a day. I sleep really, really late, um, trying to like pass hours so I can get away with eating once a day. I try to eat like at two or three in the afternoon. Um, I go back to the room right before the sun sets. Um, well, because I don't want to get eaten alive by mosquitoes and I don't want to be like really out in the streets too much in the dark and really I don't have money to spend even if I was out here and then I just kind of study 
and kind of chat with a friend in the evening until about 12 and then I try to sleep as late as possible. So that's my current situation. It's not, again, I, I don't want to sound ungrateful because I, I actually am thankful to be out of the United States. It's just one of those things with living and working abroad. And I just think people don't talk about how stressful it can be enough. Um, even as stressful as it is, I still feel much calmer than I ever would in the United States and I'm not going back. But yeah, this is definitely um, not the easiest lifestyle in the world. It will work your patient's muscle to the nth degree. So um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with folks. Um, as always, I'm Kamina the Coach, sending you love, light, peace, and joy. Until next time, I'm out.